Welcome to the final talk. Um, wow. So lots of people want to know where to go from here. Uh, welcome, Clay Clayton Croft. Um, we are really happy. His plane made it barely despite bad weather and all, all that. So uh, some might know him as crafty guy in some chat rooms. Uh, well, I, I don't need to introduce you here. Uh. So, so uh, w w <laughs> welcome and uh, yeah, glad to have you here. Hey, right. thank you. Yeah, so I'm Clayton, uh, also known as Crafty Guy. Uh, you might recognize me from some of my contributions to PostMarket OS, um, or you might recognize me from my avatar, right? No? Um, uh, I started contributed, contributing to this distribution back in 2017, uh, mainly because it had initial support for the Nokia N900, which was the first Linux phone I owned. And by 2017, I was really tired of the two options for mobile operating systems. Um, I wanted something that could run a recent Linux kernel that had a familiar user space, and most importantly, wasn't trying to like exfiltrate personal information all the time. And I still feel that way today, which is why I'm here, because I think that we as a community need to try to answer the question, where do we go from here? Because here today, the situation is quite a bit different and has improved in some ways from um, the last few years. For example, there's a number of phones out there now that can run Linux, some of them out of the box, which is really exciting. Uh, however, when you look at how many phones exist out in the world today, there's you know thousands and thousands of them, and only like a small handful can do this. So I think there's some improvement there, obviously. There's also a lot more uh, distributions, both Linux and um, as you saw in the previous talk, you know, other alternative uh, operating systems that can boot on these phones. However, I think there's um, not a whole lot of coordination between distributions today because a lot of these distributions are targeting the same hardware. They also are targeting some of the same use cases. And so a lot of them are trying to solve some of the same problems and have some of the same goals. And a lot of distributions are kind of doing it on their own and not really comparing notes and, you know, trying to work collaboratively to solve these things in cases where um, the work being done to solve the problem could you know, be used by multiple distros, for instance. And another exciting thing, I think, uh, today is there's a lot more uh, applications that have been created, um, both with some of the work from Purism and, and other folks in the community, that lets, um, lets these applications work pretty well on mobile form factors. However, uh, when you consider like non-technical end users and what they expect for a um, modern smartphone, there's still a lot of missing functionality there. So again, more, more room for improvement. And I think there's a lot of people, both inside and outside the community, who are really interested in what we're doing. And I think a lot of them are kind of asking the same questions. Um, specifically, one question I think everybody's asking, no matter who you are, is what's it like, right? What's it like to have a phone that can run Linux uh, and use it as a daily driver? What's it like to depend on that for navigation and communication? And obviously, whoever's asking this is, um, the answer to that question depends a lot on who's asking it and where they're coming from. For example, an end user, when they ask, hey, what's it like to use your phone uh, that's running Linux? They want to know, can they like message grandma on WhatsApp, or can they use it to navigate from like your hotel to the Fosdom conference and, and stuff like that? Uh, <laughs> I think like myself as an OS developer, when I think about this question, I tend to think about a lot of the, um, the problems I run into with developing and maintaining an operating system on Linux phones and how a lot of these problems, again, are shared between distributions because, again, we're targeting a lot of the same hardware and use cases. And I think about how hard it is today to create or solve problems that, um, that can be reused by other distributions without a whole lot of rework on their part, right? Um, a good recent example of this is a Librem 5 user, Chris Vogel, last week was trying to work around a problem on the Librem 5. And he uh, created some patches for this workaround, submitted them to Purism. And uh, I actually just happened to come across the patches because I was trying to address the same problem on post-market OS. And his patches look good from the context of pure OS, but they were 
pretty much unusable for me on post-market OS because of just differences in the distribution, right? Um, like his patches were relying heavily on systemd services in order to trigger things to apply workarounds, and I don't have systemd in post-market OS, so, you know, that was a non-starter right there. Um, I was able to talk to him and like give some tips on how he could redo it so that it would work across multiple distributions, even ones without system D. And I think this is kind of like the current happy situation where um, he's off creating something now that could be reused, right? But I think there's a lot of cases where um, because people don't know there's other distributions or know what they need, uh, oftentimes people run into problems like this and they create something um, which works totally fine for them but is not usable or, or, or not even known to other distributions with the same problems, right? So like I might end up recreating or redoing a lot of the work and it's, it, it's inefficient, right? Um, I would rather spend the time not solving problems that have already been solved elsewhere but you know adding new functionality or supporting users who are using the distribution that I'm helping to develop. And I think like we need a number of things as a community. Um, in order to address some of these inefficiencies with like maintaining distributions that target a lot of the same hardware and, uh, and use cases, it would be really nice if like in that previous situation I just spoke about, there was a place for a developer like Chris or myself or anyone right, to ask for feedback directly from the community and be fairly confident that they're reaching like, you know, critical mass of the community, right? Where, and also where distributions can sort of like provide this feedback. So when people do solve problems that they're experiencing, uh, or when people are trying to implement things that they could really use, that they have the opportunity to provide feedback and, you know, the person doing the work can take or leave the feedback, but at least know that they're getting input or have access to this input so they can create something that's usable by everyone and we don't have these cases where people are just kind of one off doing the same thing right um, i think it would also be really nice if if we had as a community a list of priorities that we care about both like goals and also like these shared problems um, the main purpose of this is like when contributors come along and they want something to work on uh, or not sure what to do, they could see this list of priorities and you know if we come up with it as a community we can we can put stuff up there we care about obviously and when people choose to work on these priorities then we all benefit right because they're working on things that we said are important to us and so you know maybe it'll provide some motivation or inspiration for folks that want to contribute and aren't necessarily certain how. And I think by kind of addressing the first two things, um, we'll inherently create a stronger, uh, stronger relationships within the community, right, between individuals and projects. And I think that these strong relationships are, are critical. Like if we want to have any chance of convincing, uh, you know, businesses or governments or what have you, or even just the end users, right? Like, uh, <laughs> like if I want to try to convince, um, you know, a new group of users or something to give this a shot, we need to be somewhat organized and have an idea for like what we're trying to accomplish and be able to communicate that well externally so people know what we're all about. And these strong relationships, I think, are necessary for that. And I mean, it's great like meeting people here at Fosdem, but it's like very one off, right? And we need to maintain that. And I think we maintain that by better organizing and, um, you know, trying to implement some of the things here I think we need. So, um, I'm here to propose forming a committee. I'm not even sure if committee is the right word for this, but uh, bottom line is we need to somehow be more organized than we are. Um, not necessarily like, you know, dictatorial or anything like that, but, <laughs> but in some ways um, at a higher level, just addressing like, you know, having a place for people to get feedback. And I think a committee or some central place where distributions and projects are represented could be a place like that. Um, I also think like as a, uh, a developer, I'm not necessarily like the greatest at communicating what I'm working on and like what my motivations are for working on this and what Linux on mobile or free software on mobile have to offer. So I think we should also like work on our public representation and having a committee or whatever you want to call it be sort of the single point for communicating to the world what we're doing and why we want to do it would be important. Um, 
like, I know why I'm here, right? I don't want to have a corporate centralized device that's leaking personal information and I want the freedom to hack on this thing and, you know, do what I want, more or less. But again, uh, I think a lot of us are developers or engineers and we're not necessarily like the best at communicating that to non-technical users specifically. Uh, so I think, you know, having some central thing where we can kind of work together to create something that, um, that can educate the world about us is, is, you know, nice to have. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, who is this guy? Uh, why would I want some oversight committee thing, like authority telling me what I can and can't work on during my free time? Because I know a lot of people here, myself included, are working on this uh, during our free time. And yeah, the last thing I want is somebody to be like, here's the priorities for you. Uh, you know, when are you gonna have them done by? Because that's, that's silly. Um, and I completely agree, that's not the purpose of this. <laughs> And the question, like, the point is, I don't really know what this looks like when it organizes, um, but I think we need to organize. And I created a working group. Uh, there's a link to the matrix room on the slide where I would invite everybody here, everybody listening online, um, everybody in this community to join in and let's figure out how we can um, become more organized. And oh, I'd like to thank my employer, Galia, for sponsoring my travel uh, to come here to give this talk. And yeah, any questions, comments, opinions? Pretty short talk, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nothing? Speechless. <laughs> you got there. Yeah, go ahead. Wondering if it's really such a centralized thing, or somehow uh, some mechanism to find uh, to have to find uh, for some issue uh, in other projects to look at, at which might uh, have the issue in uh, common, um, because you might uh, um, for the first time uh, probably very different uh, projects. For example, uh, I start working on the Epson Movie OPT uh, 200, uh, the glasses, and um, there are people interested in uh, having a newer Android uh, or something like that on it. And uh, um, common uh, thing needed for uh, both, uh, for who whatever should be put on it is to how to uh, really start hacking it, how to access, uh, uh, start something, put something on it, and so on. So, um, uh, um, may, maybe there has to be some uh, matrix, uh, uh, some network built up uh, uh, along which uh, corners uh, issues, issues uh, should uh, travel or should manually uh, check if there is some, uh, if that uh, issue is also. So if I enter an issue, I would like to somehow get a list of other projects um, where it might also be uh, relevant. Maybe for issue to find things out, or maybe to uh, find some partners uh, for mainlining uh, stuff or uh, so on. Maybe that's something. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the motivations for why I was think why I spent way too much time thinking about this is, um, yeah, for problems like that that exist across distributions and and whatever, um, it'd be nice to know about that, right? If you're also trying to work on supporting a new device or, um, you know, improving something in your distro, and you want to know if other people have had this problem, and right now it's like you have to kind of know what other distros are out there who might be working on this thing and then, you know, know where to find information and then go search like a million different GitLab instances or whatever to figure out like, is this a problem that other people have seen or not? And it's kind of a mess, right? And the same goes for like a lot of other problems I've come across. And so, um, yeah, that's the idea, right? Have kind of a central place where people can, um, where problems like that can be expressed and people who are working on them, no matter what distribution you're in, can work together on these things. 
Yes. Yeah, so I think the same problem is the uh, like application distribution and uh, available runtimes, available libraries, like the, uh, the tooling that you can use as an application developer targeting, like all the various mobile distros are widely different. Some distros are there, you don't have a distribution platform, you are expected, I guess, like to build the stuff yourself and upload it into your device. So it's pretty hard for someone who would want to like support multiple of these distributions right now, because it's really like one amount of work per each distribution that you need to actually like, up, up yeah. all the time. It's a big problem as well, I think, that it could be better coordinated somehow. I'm not sure, like some flatpex runtime, whatever. Yeah, that's that's tricky, right? Because uh, like in in desktop world. Um, there's some focus towards like Flatpak and other ways to sort of package the runtime. So then it kind of doesn't matter what the distro is, right? Because you can reuse the same runtime. And then you write your application and you target that thing. And uh, I don't know if that's right for us, but like that specific thing. But I agree, like there should be a way that people can talk about these things within these distributions we have. And like I think there's a fine line, like. Uh, we don't necessarily want to try to, I, I like that there's a lot of distributions and I like that they're all doing their own thing, right? Because like PostMarket OS was started by Ali for a very specific reason and, and like people started Mobian because they wanted to run Debian on their device. And there's less focus on like what the run times are there, but um, I think it's a good thing that there's so much like distro diversity or whatever within the community. And I wouldn't really want to try to like shoehorn any particular um, runtime mechanism or whatever you want to call it. Um, on the other hand, I know that's like, I know it's hard for application developers, right? Like as you said, so. Um, yeah, like on, on a disco plane, for example, you can expect that to have some like cube or GDK or something. And this still is not a given on the Valorize disco. Right. So like some flavor of cube, some special GTK or even some something really just like, Yeah. Have, like if you can even count on like common GUI libraries in the world. So would it be nice if if uh, if you had a way to ask distributions like, hey, what version of GTK3 are you running or something, right? And be able to get input directly from them. So that way, at least you know, like, here's the minimum version I need to support. And I know it's not the ideal situation where you just, like, support whatever you want, but, um, yeah, basically the idea is, like, you'd be able to go and say, hey, Linux mobile distros, um, I want to target this version of GTK4 for this application. If you care about this application, is there like a, a version I should look at targeting or something? And so today, if you wanted to do that, uh, you'd have to like, you'd have to know what all the distros are that might be interested in using this thing you want to create. And then you need to know how to contact them. And even when you do, the people who have an opinion might not even be online or, you know, might not be available or maybe you ask the wrong person or something. So it's, it's not great, right? Um, so yeah, what I'm proposing is like have a way that you could ask for feedback from all the folks in the community and people who care about what you're doing can be like, yeah, here's the version I use. Or like maybe, um, you know, maybe this person is like representing their distro and they take it back to the person who knows that's working on their distro and then they, you know, give you the answer back or whatever. So it's a way to convey information basically um, to and from people who are interested in, you know, solving those problems. Yes. Uh, I like that you mentioned the uh, public representation. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'm not that technical, and I'm here out of interest because I, I have to go with my time and install and stuff and all these things. But I'm still stuck with a phone that has a bad battery or uses a battery badly, I guess. Uh, and for me, for instance, it's very interesting to hear about all possibilities with saving energy on your, on your device and not having to upgrade your device to a, a new one to run the new software. So I think that's a very important aspect, actually, the public documentation, and also to make the uh, uh, importance of this uh, much more known. Um, yeah. To, to counter the vendor locking, for instance, uh, and all these uh, uh, dependencies you have these days. So thank you very much uh, for mentioning that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I get reminded daily, right? My wife's like, what are you working on exactly? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> some phone stuff, you know. <laughs> 
Um, but I know like uh, there's a lot of people, friends, family, whatever, who have tried to search online for like what this Linux mobile thing or free software mobile thing is all about. And uh, <laughs> they tend to see like, you know, posts by people and projects who are the loudest talking about what they're doing specifically, but not like what the whole thing is about, right? Um, and yeah, so like if a business or, or you or somebody's interested, you kind of just get like this hodgepodge collection of information and it's hard to like figure out what exactly is going on here. Yeah, it's like you're interested and you follow the, 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 the trail of information, you end up at some point uh, and then you doubt that point and maybe go to another. And it's fine like that, but it's a, a big effort for the public. Yeah, yeah. Well, for, for now, it's for the techies. You know? Right. This is the, the truth. And it's okay because it, it started from, from that uh, of, uh, group of people. Uh, and, and, and you need those group of people, otherwise, it wouldn't exist. Uh, but uh, I think it's something that sh you shouldn't understand. Yeah, thanks for proving my point. <laughs> yes? Do you think that, how is this different than like Linux in general? You, you, I mean, a lot, a lot of people use phones and, and uh, in a way that they're not very aware of what the operating system is maybe. Like, how is it different? Like how has Linux succeeded where mobile Linux isn't or something like that? Yeah, I mean, depending on how... We've already had this kind of central place, but I don't think it does really. No, no, no. Um, desktop Linux is what I call it. I don't know. There's, yeah, you know, like Red Hat and, and Canonical and those folks who are doing desktop and server distributions. Um, those are, those communities are kind of dominated by certain companies, right, who are um, out there to make a product and sell support and sell services and sell products and whatever um, we don't I mean there are some OEMs who are doing stuff that are selling products um, purism is the obvious one uh, but we don't really have any big like corporate uh, participants in this community yet I honestly don't want to see that happen because I think there's there's a lot of history with trying to run this type of environment on phones right um, and I think that some of the past failures were due to, um, you know, big corporations getting involved, um, dumping a ton of resources in. You could argue whether it was like, you know, done effectively or not, but then kind of just giving up when they lose interest because, you know, it didn't turn a profit as fast as they thought it would or whatever. Um, so like, I don't want to recreate that. <laughs> And I also realized, like, we don't have, you know, a ton of money pouring into this right now, which could be a good thing. So, um, I mean, this is my attempt to, like, try to organize without waiting around for somebody to be like, hey, that's a business model I need to throw money at, and then just overwhelming us with, you know, like, one option and, uh, you know, one or two devices and, and sort of just, like, pigeonholing the whole community in that way. So I'm, I'm hoping that by bringing this discussion up now, we can kind of... Um, prevent that from happening and um, yeah it'd be cool if like desktop Linux had something like that but I think we're also kind of in a more unique situation like people that want to run Linux on their desktop um, the hardware is kind of boring right like it's mostly x86 it's kind of a solved problem there every so often you'll get like a Wi-Fi module that acts up and like oh wow you know unsupported hardware but on phones, it's like, oh wow, the whole platform doesn't work, right? And then you gotta like start from the ground up, and it's getting better as um, as like Luca was talking about, and the work that people are doing on mainline Linux, it's it's getting better, right? With device bring up, but there's still a lot of like weird hardware out there, and so um, yeah, I, I think like a lot of the organization can benefit some of that because again a lot of these distros are targeting some of the same hardware so like when you run into a problem it's almost certainly going to be specific to like uh, some some device model or, or some family of uh, SOCs and so like as distros we want to know what those problems are so we're not having to try to solve them individually hope that answered your question <laughs> yeah I do think you're or I do think there's at least 
two two uh, things you know proposed, and I think on one side it's how to get ordinary users engaged, or, or like I don't know non-limit users engaged, and the other side is how as distros do we work together um, to more effectively like progress, right? Or am I missing a part? Or no, um, I think those are two two things I'd like to see happen. Um, I think they're very much related, right? Um, what I mean by that is uh, if the distros can get their shit together, then the end user experience gets better, right? I think, in my opinion. People who develop applications for distros and don't necessarily have to think too hard about the distros or can at least like, you know, get the feedback necessary to make something that works everywhere, gives end users more choices. They can run more distributions based on, and, and they may not care, right, in some cases. Um, but also, like, it, it kind of sucks using a phone and running into a problem that's, like, distro-specific, right? And you kind of want your applications to work um, the same, regardless of what distro you have, right? Because you don't want to have a phone that's running post-market OS that supports like, you know, these applications and these features and whatnot, and then have a device running Manjaro or Mobian or something else, and, you know, you have a different set of things that work there, and then you have, you know, another phone with some other distro on there with, you know, some different set of applications and stuff that work there. Um, so I think by getting all the distros kind of, you know, organized, and, and, and it's, I don't think it's just distros, I think it's also OEMs too. Um, and other projects that are in the community, I think, should also be a part of this as well. And by kind of getting our, our stuff together, then we can help with providing a more consistent um, experience for end users who, you know, that's what they want. They want their phone to work. <laughs> that sounds like a great closing statement.